We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, good to see everyone out today in the house of God. It's been a great day. Pray for the remainder of service. Pray for Mr. Nash. He's been coming to preach it for us a little bit. Uh, it's just been a great day. Pray for Patrick down at the pool for preaching the homecoming service down there at the church. Pray for the revival to the starting. Pray for all these men of God that are the Word of God. In this day and time we live, a lot of folks don't want to hear it because it convicts them of their sin. It tells us it's sharper than any two edged sword. It will penetrate the heart, the soul. Word of God. Amen. It is good to be here today. We have full of pray. Uh, got any smoking requests today? Amen. Calling Brother Johnny to be having church tomorrow. Replacing on the people who are much needed for a long time. Any other spoken request? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Children, church children. The Lord come by their way. Father, Lord, today. Lord, we thank you, God, for the 
bless us, God. The Lord of our families and our friends, God, we thank you for them as we hear their pleas and their requests, God, this morning. We realize that many of them, God, have uh, people in their families that are hurting us. They have trouble and trials, God. And Lord, we don't know what they're going through, but you do, God. And you know what each one needs, God. The uh, Lord, a touch from you, especially, God. A uh, God, a healing touch, God. Uh, but Lord, we pray, Father, this morning, God, uh, God, for you people, for our people, God. God, today, uh, that we might have a touch of God, Father, uh, in our lives, God. Uh, uh, Lord, today, a spiritual, uh, uh, Father, awakening, God. Uh, uh, Lord, in our soul, God. Uh, uh, Lord, to live for you, to serve you, God. Uh, uh, God, as we see, God, uh, that not many days are left, uh, uh, God, in these old lives, Father, here, uh, uh, God, as we look. And then we see this outward man, uh, it's perishing day by day, uh, uh, God, but this inward man, uh, God, that that you saved, that that you created, God, uh, uh, Father, Lord, Lord, it's a renewed, uh, uh, God, it's a going home one day after a while, uh, uh, God, and we just pray, God, that while we're here, God, we can help someone along the way, God, to come to know you, God, as their Lord and Savior. God, we pray for revival, God, uh, here at Sweet Gum, God, amongst your people, God, uh, Lord, we be revived, uh, God, in spirit, heart, and soul, God, Father, uh, uh, God, we might have that uh, desire to work for you, to worship you, God, uh, to get back to where we once were, God, uh, Oh, uh, Lord, in standings and fellowship with you, God. Oh, uh, uh, Lord, to be in that place, God. Oh, uh, uh, Lord, that you'd have us to be, God. Oh, uh, God, there's your place to lie, God, in that place of that rock, God. Oh, uh, uh, Lord, we see, God, uh, help us, God, to always be reminded uh, that we're nothing on our own, uh, that we need you every day, every hour, every minute, God. Oh, uh, uh, Lord, we pray, God, for man, Lord, see, come to preach this morning, God, that you just anoint him, God, from head to toe, God. Lord, to preach the word of God, Father, it's high our spirit involved in the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. God, uh, oh Lord, you have those people, God, that uh, have heard of the word of God today. Help us, Lord, and just be obedient, God. Uh, Father and Lord, today uh, we pray, Lord, for these others, Lord. Uh, that's a hurt that's been mentioned. Uh, pray for Gentry down there, God. Uh, uh, Lord, we pray for these having surgery. Uh, we pray for this is happening. Uh, uh, Lord, you just touch it, Lord. Help her, God. Lord, bless that family, God. Uh, uh, Lord, according to your will, uh, your mercy, and your grace, God. Uh, we pray for Patrick down there to call this morning, God. Uh, Lord, you just anoint him, Father. All these men. And we'll go to God this morning. Uh, Jesse Adams, Jesse Chris. God, we see so many. God, uh, the Lord has given all these things up. God, to serve you to preach the word, God. Uh, we know that it will be a blessing to them, God, and a blessing to your people. Father, have your way and remind of this service, God. Touch a heart, Lord. Heal a broken spirit this morning, God. A broken heart. And God, pray one lost, God. Uh, the Lord, convict that soul this morning. Convince them, God, what they need in their life. And that's the Lord Jesus. The Savior of the world, God. The, the Lord, this is the Father, we ask again, Lord, this for the leadership of the Holy Ghost here and a reminder of the service and the song and the preaching, God. Lord, again, we thank you. And Lord, we pray for the blessing of holy name. For in Christ's name we pray this morning. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to read something here. We're getting ready to sing a song. And this writing is on this page here in this songbook. It's uh, Isaiah 43. And I want, I want to read that to you. I don't know if, uh, what your need is this morning. I don't know if you're going through a valley. I don't know what troubles and trials that you're going through. God does. And as we're going to sing this song we're here in Isaiah 43. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Then he shall have flame be kindled upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sebe for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. As we see here, he's talking to his people Israel. 
For God never leaves us to ask. Amen. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, to the south, keep not back my sons from the far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed thee. Yea, I have made him. Whatever storm you're in, whatever trial you're going through, God knows your heart.
Amen. 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 the burden, what of the trial. Amen. I promise you, it is a lot better. Amen. 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 It's good to have them out nation with us today. He will come and bring the word of God. You just come and preach out of your city. It's a long, powerful, long word. Mad nation. Amen. Appreciate it. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Pretty Amen. Good to be here. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I come to get in, not to get out. Amen. And Amen. I'll tell you where I'm from, up there in Old Savannah, Brother Austin. I've told this before. Uh, we don't get out about 1 o'clock. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I just scared half of you right there. <laughs> it's all right. Amen. We'll just try to mind the Lord. I want to do this. Anybody got a word or testimony? Anything on your heart you need to do or say for the Lord this morning? It's His time, amen. You just mind Him. I'm going to give you the opportunity. Thank the Lord for saving me. Thank you. That is a girl. It's going to be a good enough. Amen. Never been the same. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Thank you for saving me, for His mercy, for His grace, for His faith. God's good all the time. Thank you. Amen, sister. Praise the Lord. Thank God for your testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I'll tell you what, going on seven years, I got a spiritual birthday coming up on Tuesday. Hallelujah. Amen. Got saved seven years ago on a Tuesday night in a revival meeting. Bless God, I love you, Brother Gary. I, I agree 100% with you. I ain't been the same since. And I'm glad that I ain't forgot about it. And I'm glad I ain't got over it. Hallelujah. Amen. Once you get born again, friend, you'll never get over it. And I pray that I, this morning I'm with Brother Gary, and I'll tell you, I believe that uh, the people of God are going through some things. Amen. I just want to come and be an help and encouragement to you. I appreciate your pastor, and he's a dear brother to us, and I thank God for him, and you need to back him and get behind him. No doubt you probably do, but you need to pray for him. Amen. And I thank God for him, and I thank God for this opportunity. Turn with me in your Bible to Psalm chapter number 23. Amen. Psalm chapter number 23. Uh, it's already been made mention here. Uh, there is help, amen, in this old-fashioned altar. I do believe it is the most unused piece of furniture in God's house, amen. amen. I travel all over western North Carolina just trying to do my best for my Lord, and I see a lot of people, a lot of elders, uh, desolate, amen. The, the church won't use it. The people ain't praying. People ain't seeking God. I'll tell you, we need revival, amen. amen. And I'm glad that uh, y'all are having revival coming up. You do pray for me. Being a revival meeting is coming up with down in Troy, North Carolina, and Montgomery County. So you pray for us. Pray for my dear little wife and my little girl. This is the uh, first revival meeting I've been able. God's allowed us to preach by ourselves. And uh, you pray for them while I'm gone. And you pray for us. Pray for that church that they get revived. Amen. 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 But I thank God for His Word this morning. And as I've already made mention, there's help here. The Bible says, casting all your care upon for He cares for you, friend. If you've got a burden of need, amen, here it is. The altar's open. I can't close them. You can't close them. Church can't close them. Amen. All the one that can is God. Amen. amen. So you just mind the Lord today. The Bible tells us this in Psalm chapter number 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He yes. maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Hallelujah. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. With the help of the Lord this morning, I want to preach on this thought. The Lord is my shepherd. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, I come before thy throne of grace this morning in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you fill us, God, with the Holy Spirit. God, for thy service. God, give us that unction. God, anoint us. God, I pray that you help your people. Help that one that's discouraged this morning, God. I pray that you encourage their heart, Father. God, if there's one here, Lord, that you're not their shepherd, God, I pray that you deal with our heart. God, put them under Holy Ghost conviction. God, I pray that you draw them to an old-fashioned altar of repentance. 
God, I pray for that saint of God that's back soon on you. God, I pray to come back to you. God, I want to give you the glory. I want to give you the praise and the honor. God, Father, it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. We come to Psalm chapter number 23 and on that thought, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, the Bible, it doesn't really tell us uh, where David's at. We do know this is a Psalm of David. Amen. Uh, but we don't know where David's at. We don't know if he's there in, in, uh, feeding the sheep there at the Jerusalem before the battle of him and Goliath. And we don't know if he's up there in a cave uh, just thinking back on when uh, he went and defeated Goliath with the help of the Lord. But I want you to know this one thing is uh, while we look in the scripture here, the Bible tells us the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Number one, we see that David, he had a personal relationship with the Lord Almighty. Amen. That's where it all begins. That's where it all starts, friend, this morning. You'll never get anywhere with God without having a personal relationship with Him. What do you mean, preacher? Well, you must be born again. Amen. As I made mention already, I've made, I've made profession after faith, profession after faith, but I've never been truly born again. But thank God, seven years ago, as I've already made mention on a Tuesday night, the Holy Ghost of God came to where I was at three quarters of the way back, spoke to my heart, told me I was lost and undone, and headed for a devil's hell. And by His good grace, Brother Gary, by His good mercy, I stepped out by faith. That's all I know to do. I didn't have enough money, Gary. I didn't have... Hey, I I had the church membership, but that didn't matter. I couldn't do enough good works. Amen. All I know to do is just come to Jesus. Call upon Him for salvation. Amen. And He became my shepherd. Amen. 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 And this morning I want you to know you'll never go anywhere for God without having that personal relationship with Him. Yes. Notice that word Lord in your Bible. It's all caps. Amen. That's Jehovah God. Amen. And that's that that's that God, amen, it tells about in the revelation where it says, He that was, that is, and that is to come, amen. That good shepherd, friend, he is coming, amen. We've done made mention of that already, uh, but I want you to know it was the Lord Jehovah David was talking about. Amen. That same God, Brother Gary, in Genesis 1 1, it said in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, amen. He spake this thing into existence seven days. Thank God, amen. I don't believe I come from a monkey, friend. Hey, you're created in God's own image. He loved you, friend. He created you, amen. Hey, you didn't evolve. This world didn't just big bang boom. I was in the Marine Corps and I seen a bunch of bang boom and all it made was a big God. Amen. God spoke this thing into existence. That same God there that, that did that in Genesis 1 1 was the same God that called Moses, amen, and the burning bush and spoke to him and said, Hey, go, go let my people go lead them out of Egypt, amen. It's that same God that David's talking about uh, there when he had got anointed king of Israel, amen. It was that same God where he played the heart for Saul. And then the next thing you know, he's down there in the valley uh, facing that giant, amen. I want you to know it's that same God this morning that died for you on Calvary's tree, friend. Hey, that paid your sin, man. Hey, the debt that I couldn't pay, the debt that you couldn't pay this morning, He paid for my sins on the old cross, amen. And guess what? He's alive and well this morning. Hey, you know that preacher? He dwells within. Hey, man, I believe this is David sat there, whether it was in the cave or whether he was back in Jerusalem. He knew that God dwelt with him. He knew that he was his shepherd. And oftentimes I think about a shepherd and, and, and how that he, he looks over his sheep and how he cares for his sheep. And that personal relationship that David had with the Lord being his shepherd, he knew that God cared for him. I want you to know something, child of God. That same God, he might be your shepherd. I want you to know if you're discouraged, whatever you might be facing this morning, He does care for you. He still loves you. He never thrown you away. He never will. He said those that come to me when He will no wise cast out. Amen. 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 Boy, it's good to hear this morning. I appreciate it. I appreciate the Lord. Amen. I thank God for liberty. You go to some place, brother Gary, it's as high as a banjo string. Amen. Amen. That's just how it is. I'm glad he's my shepherd. Amen. And if you're able to say that same thing this morning, 
You ought to shout from the rooftop. You could and we deserve to be in hell with our back broke, but thank God Almighty, we come to a church house this morning and we're breathing breath in our lives, amen. We're looking at a King James Bible, amen, reading from the Word of God, the Holy, infallible, in every Word of God, friend. Amen. Hey, we ought to shout, the Lord's my shepherd. Amen. Now, can you come on into verse 1, not only that, he said, I shall not want. I got to wondering about that. What is he wanting? The Bible tells us we're complete in him. As the good shepherd, as he's David's shepherd, he knows and realizes that the Lord God Almighty, we, he don't need anything. He's got everything. To this world, you may be, you may not have a lot. And you may not have a lot of money in the bank. You may be going through some hard times and some hard trials into this world. You're nothing, child of God. I'm, I'm preaching to the church this morning. Hey, man, I'm telling you, I'm sick of seeing. It's like the cloud of oppression over God's people. And I'm telling you what, we got victory this morning. And it's in Jesus, hey, man. I'm not looking for an emotionalism type thing. I'm just being real with you, man. Well, there is an oppression, I believe, over, over, over the church. But we see, I shall not want. But that same God that saved you, that same one that is your Lord and your Savior, He, hey, He's getting you're complete in Him, and He'll provide everything you need. Amen. Amen. As I already may mention, you may not have a lot to bank, you may not have all that money can buy. But if you're a born again Christian child of God, you're rich beyond measure. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This morning. I may not have much in the bank, but the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. 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 I'm thankful that I shall not want. But I'm going to look at this number two. I'll try to be real brief, but I'm just going to remind the Lord. Here we see David as in him, the Lord's his shepherd, and I shall not want. But we see in verses two through about verse the top portion of verse six and that we see David's personal journey. I'm glad that when He saved you, and it is a personal relationship. Amen. Amen this morning. You're not saved because your mom and daddy saved. Right. You're not saved because your grandma and grandpa told you you was. Amen. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. And just like that's a one-on-one -on -one salvation, it's a one-on-one -on -one personal journey. Amen. 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 Yeah, hey, I'm talking about this morning. Your sanctification. When you, that's, there's two parts of that. When you're born again, you're a saint of God. Thank God. Number two, but progressive sanctification, meaning that God is still working on me and you. Amen. He's where when you talk about preacher, I'm talking about that God's still working on me. I'm not perfect, and nobody in here is. We must well get that out of our poor little heads, amen. Ain't nobody in here perfect this morning. Amen. We all sin a lot of times, amen. But I'll tell you what, we come to the throne of grace and ask God to cleanse us and forgive us. You ain't got to get saved again. Thank God, once saved, I believe once saved, always saved. You may not believe that yes. here, but I'll preach it because it's Bible. Amen. Amen. It's Scripture. He yes. said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. Amen. But we see his personal journey. We see that no, number one in, the, in verse two, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That green is growing. Anything that's green, it's growing. That pastors, it means an abode. I thank God, Brother Gary, when I got born again, He birthed me into the family of God. Amen. Amen. And I still believe God works through the local Amen. church. Amen. 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 He still works through the local church. Amen. 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 He's the head. Hey, the under shepherd's your pastor. And then He works through them. Amen. 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 God put us in that abode. I thank God that he, when you got saved, you're birthed into the family of God. And He puts you in a good church. Amen. Amen. You ought to thank God for a good church. Amen. One that preaches truth and that preaches right. Amen. Amen. You ought to thank God for a man of God that will preach you truth and will preach it right from that Bible. Amen. You know what this world needs, Gary? It needs some preachers, amen. And I'm going to talk to some preachers in 
sitting here. I don't know who you are. I love you if there's any in the building. I don't know. But you need to, I'm praying that God give us men of God some backbone like a saw log. Amen. Give us some grit like we used to have. I'll tell you what I needed when I was lost. I needed some preacher. Amen. And God sent them, thank God. And the priest at Gun Barrel Straight told me my sin was sin, Brother Gary. Told me if I didn't turn to Jesus, I was going to burn in hell. Thank God for submitting God that will preach the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I've been praying. God, give us preachers some backbone. Amen. 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 God's been working in my heart saying it ain't about you, big boy. It's all about me. And I'm telling you what, it's high time that the church, the body of believers come together. Amen. Well, yes, it may come any time. And I do believe that, friend. Hey, but while we're here, we're to be working at one together, one accord, friend. Amen. You want a recipe for a Bible? Look in Acts chapter number 2. Look at that look, when the church was birthed. In Acts 2, it said they all come together in one accord. They may have one mind and one accord. They even sold their possessions, brother. So they break bread with one another. I told this, uh, I, Lord's allowing us to teach Sunday school there at Old Savannah uh, to help my pastor out. And thank God for the opportunities that God gives us. But I'll tell you what, if you and we just got done with Acts 2. And if you look at that, they were pray, praying one for another. They loved one another, amen. And, and I got to tell them the other day, my daddy's a preacher, and I grew up in a preacher's home. But uh, I remember in old times, uh, up there used to be an old man, his name was Cecil, and we'd go up to Piney Mountain Baptist Church up there, and every time we'd go up there, that old man, he'd just tell you, bring a mater, he'd bring something to my daddy, amen, just to be a help, trying to help the man of God, amen. I don't see that, I don't know, it may still go on down here, and I pray that it does, but where I'm from, and where I'm at, you don't see that often. God help us. God help us. I'll tell you what, young people, and you ought to thank God for your youth. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what, young people, hey, there's some of these older ones in God's house if you just go up to them and say, I appreciate you. Old ones, it do you some good, amen, to go to these young ones and encourage them. So you stay in the fight for the Lord. You keep on the fire line. Them trials and them temptations may come at school, but you just keep on the fire line for Jesus. Amen. Amen. I didn't know I was going to get off on that right here. Put the Lord to my shepherd. Hallelujah. Oh, that's free of charge, by the way. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We see that, that first he, he leads me and down in green pastures. Watch this. He leads me beside the still waters. I was asking God, praying in my study, Lord, what does this mean? What, 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 what is all? It's peace. Think about it. You're walking down by green pastures in drip, and you're walking by that still water. God's right there, hand in hand. Often thing you think of putting it in perspective as we talked about David, how he could have been in the cave and how he could have been could be that he was over there fixing to go face to life. He knew that God would lead him, he knew God put him in the family of God. Amen. And he knew that hey, he'd lead him by the still waters. They had peace. I didn't know what peace was until I got saved. Amen. Amen. And child of God, I'll tell you what, if you ain't real careful, you'll have no peace either. Why? Because you've been disobedient to God. You'll not have peace until you're in God's will. Amen, Amen right there. I knew it'd get quiet. It's all right. Still water runs deep. Amen. He laid it beside the still waters. Never forget when I got saved, that piece of God came in, and I wouldn't take a million dollars for it. Amen. Amen. I tell you, I'm a farmer. That's what I am by trade. What I do for a job. We see some awful things. I'll tell you, our world is wrecked with drugs, man. It's wrecked with it. I work in West Asheville, probably the roughest part of town. The hood is in my area. There's been times the other day. 25 year old girl, Brother Gary, had a heart attack because she knows those home drugs. Dead, gone. Looking for peace. Looking for something that would take that peace, would give her peace. She was trying to find it in a heroin needle. 
Amen. There's people out there trying to find it in pornography. In sexual desire. Amen. Amen. They're trying to look for it in the bottom. But my friend, they got to keep going back. And going back. And going back to get that dead and whatever's bothering them. But praise be unto God the night I got saved. Hey, bless God, He gave me pins. I didn't have to go back to a bottle. I didn't have to go back to them old nasty websites or anything. That man church. Thank God, and He done the same for you, friend. Amen. 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 That's why a child of God gets convicted when he goes back out in the world. Because God saved you out of that mess. Yep. He didn't intend for you to go back into it. And I'll tell you what, you don't hear much preaching on chastisement no more. If you're a child of God this morning, and you can go and you can sin without chastisement, I'd do some checking up. Because I'll tell you what, God will convict you and He'll let you go far enough. Now, this is Scripture, friend. You don't hear a lot of this preaching no more. But He'll, have, he'll take the body out of here. He may have saved the soul. He ain't going to just let you drag His name through the mud. Amen. That's Bible preaching, friend. That's Bible God. Why? Why would He do that? Because He's your shepherd. He loves you. He died for you. Amen. He laid him beside the still waters. David had that peace there. Look, look at this. There's four he's there. If you study that out, you can take a pen and underline that out. But he says this, He restoreth my soul. I've already made mention of that. Got ahead of myself. Could David have not, David knew that God would never leave him. Could it have been that when David sinned with Bathsheba, he went back to that song he could have wrote. He restoreth my soul. Meaning that that good shepherd will never leave you. No matter how the child of God, how far in sin you get back in, He will restore you. I'm afraid today that there's so many people, the devil has sold a lie to, our, to the Christian that they've messed up so much that they can't be used with God. Man, that's a lie out of hell. Amen. I'll tell you, you may have disqualified yourself from preaching, but that ain't all there is to serving God. Amen. That ain't all there is to being a Sunday school teacher serving God. Amen. What about your job, child of God? What about your workplace? Hey, mom and dad, what about them youngins? Amen. Hey, mama, how about that little youngin you're raising and you're worried to death that uh, you ain't doing enough for God. And you go over there in Titus chapter number 2 and you read about a good godly woman, amen, how she leads a home and takes care of the home. Not that she spiritually leads a home, but when the man's gone, somebody's got to step in. Amen. amen. Read Titus chapter number 2 and you'll figure out what I'm talking about. Hey, Daddy. I'm going to talk to you a minute. I'll tell you what's the truth, Brother Gary. We ain't got no. It's hard to find a man anymore. Yeah. Daddy, you're providing the home. The Bible said if you wouldn't work to provide for your family, you're worse than an infidel. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That means you don't go to work. Amen. And when you work, you do it as unto the Lord. Yeah. For His glory. So, amen, friend. That's Bible preaching this morning. I'm telling you what, where we really, I believe, as America is messed up, is in the home. We, we forgot about the home. We, I, I'll tell you, I, I'm okay with Christian schools, but a lot of times, nine times out of ten, and I'm preaching it right this morning, they send their youngest to Christian schools so that they ain't got to teach them the Bible. Some of the most wicked people I ever see come out of Christian school. And I'll tell you what, they're wicked too in public school. Amen. It is what it is. But I'll tell you what, Mom and Dad, it's your responsibility to take these young ones up and to teach them the Word of God. Amen. Amen. He restored my soul. Put him back where he needed to be. Put him back in fellowship with him, thank God. 
Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, there's been times out I've been saved where I've had to get my find myself in old fashioned order, right at my prayer grounds and say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. It might not be an outward sin, but my, what about a sin of envy? A sin of contention? A sin of strife? A jealousy? Hey, maybe you got all against your brother. I don't know. That's a sin, friend. And you're, who you can think and God's going to bless over top of that? Amen. He restores my soul. All we got to do is get fellowship to brother with you and your Lord this morning. All you got to do is call upon Him. Say, God, I'm sorry. Cleanse me. Wash me. And he said he'd do it. Hallelujah. He restores my soul. Not only that, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. How about that holiness? I didn't know Pentecostal word, by the way. That's a Bible word. God still expects us to live holy. Amen. To strive, as Paul said, to press toward the mark every day. Well, I fail him, brother, every day. But all God wants from me is just to press toward the mark. Amen. Amen. How about it when your friends, young people are at school or maybe at work or somewhere on the job and they're cussing. Are you right there cussing with them? What about those jokes they tell are you right there telling those jokes with them? I'm doing getting quiet. Yeah. It's all right. Mm. How about it? God help us. God help us this morning. Yes, indeed. God still wants us to live a sanctified home unto Him. Amen. Not that you're working to keep your salvation free because you can't keep it. Amen. Salvation's of the Lord this morning. Amen. Peter said you're kept by the power of God. Amen. Amen. Say, preacher, well, I got scripture on it. Back it up, friend. Call on for His name's sake, you see. But then we see that personal journey goes on down into. Watch this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we see that He said that I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. I think about this, and I think about that when David could have been feeding his sheep, he knew that the children of Israel was fighting in the Philistines there in 1 Samuel chapter number 17. They'd been fighting them for 40 days. David knew something had to be done. It was his people. So he goes down there. Long story short, he goes down there. He goes down there and faces into that valley. That goes down in there. And could you imagine David as he's speaking this song? Thou art with me. Notice in your Bible, you can spell that out for yourself in 1 Samuel 17. Now that is a valley where he faces Goliath. Could it be when he walks down in that valley? Amen. He, he, he's singing this song for thou art with me. He said, yeah, thou walk through the valley the shadow of death. You know that you... To have a shadow, you've got to have some light. There's got to be a light cast to have a shadow. You see, that's the difference between a saint individual and an unbeliever. An unbeliever will be cast, in, if they die in their sin, they may never be cast in outer darkness. There's no shadow there. We may face the valley of the shadow of death, child of God, one of these days, but thank God it's just a shadow. Amen. Hey, Glory to God. It's just a shadow. Thank God for the grace He saved you, the grace that's keeping you, and the grace that'll lead you home. Amen. 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 I love that verse of Scripture with me. May you dear for not but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. It's just a shadow. David, he knew that. Why? Because the Lord was his shepherd. Amen. Amen. He said, For thou art with me. And we see on down in here, as he goes, Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Not only that, he knew that he would be with him, uh, that he would never leave him as he goes in that valley of death, but he, he prepares a table. 
And in the Bible, a table, they had a, a table in the tabernacle in the temple. And they had a table of sheep right there. And it's a perfect picture of the Word of God. Me and you eat of that bread, thank God. Child of God, I want to encourage you. Get in your Bible. You know where the church is failing at today? Reading and praying. We're failing, reading and praying. I'll tell you what, if you've got it, I'm, you say, preacher, I ain't got time. If you just make time. If, you, if that means you've got to get up at 5 in the morning, you say, oh gosh, I can't do that. What about, if you've got to get up at 5 in the morning just to read some scripture, I'll tell you what I'd do. And I promise you've got to honor that. You honor God with your time, there's, cause there's some of that time. It ain't just money, friend. And that is part of the Bible too. Scripture tithe. Amen. You ought to give God your first fruits. Amen. Not all that's a tax. That's gross. Whoa. I got some of you right there. I'll tell you what. If you give God that money, you can't, get, you can't outgive God, friend. I see that missions over on that board. I noticed that. I'm big on missions. I believe it's part of the Bible. Acts 1 and 8. We are to fulfill that. How do we fulfill that? Well, we send money. If we didn't send money to missionaries, then people in here would have to go to China. Then people in here would have to go to Iraq, have to go to Afghanistan, have to go, amen, all over the world to fulfill the Bible. But what do we do? God calls missionaries into the mission field, and by us as the local church helping them out, we give them money. And my friend, every soul that's saved, Every soul that's saved in the mission field that you give, amen, sweet gum back will have his name, amen, attached to it. What a blessing. Amen. amen. Part of your tithe goes to this church. Lord, help me, Jesus. I didn't know I was going to get on all this right here. I'm just preaching what God put on my heart. Amen. He wants your time. If you give it to Him, He'll honor you. Damn. He honored God. God honored Daniel. You know, it's a Bible principle. We see that He prepared that table. He fed him. He provided what He needed there. But not only that, He says this, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup from the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God when God saves you, that, that anointing there, that comes from the Spirit of God. Placed on the inside. He told His disciples over there in John 14, He wouldn't leave the comfortless. Thank God in Acts 2, the comforter came and He stayed. And my friend, if you ain't got the Spirit of God dwelling in you, you are none of His. Right. Right. Amen. And that same Spirit there, I'll tell you, it's the song design gets sung sometime, Brother Gary. The preacher will get real good and right, amen. And next thing you know, them old teardrops are coming down. Next thing you know, amen, your hands are going up just praising and worshiping the Lord. What is that that does that? That's a Holy Ghost bone within you. I don't know about you, but I'll tell you what, whenever I hear them singing about up out of my, it is well with my soul. About I'll fly away. About amazing grace. There's something on the inside, friend, that goes to doing circles. Next thing I know, Gary's coming out here. Next thing I know, I can't help it. Hallelujah. And the next thing you just get them cases, can't help it, say, man. But what's going on in the church? I don't see that much going on no more. The Holy Ghost is grieved. He's grieved. And He's quenched. What does grief mean? Well, if I do something to my wife there, it hurts her, does it not? If I do something against her, it hurts her. If I sin against God, it hurts He the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they're all three one. Amen. Amen right there. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They're all three one. Amen. 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 So He's hurt. You know what you need to do when you grieve the Spirit of God? God, I'm sorry. Please forgive your store, my soul. Restore that fellowship. Amen. He'll do it. And He's quenched. What does quenched mean? It means that when it gets good in here, 
And the Spirit of God's moving. You see, the Spirit of God, here's where these charismatics get it wrong. The Spirit of God, it doesn't speak of itself, but it speaks of Jesus. He'll go through the, the pews, he'll work. Amen. And he'll go to, they'll get to sing about Jesus. Amen. The Holy Ghost, he'll say, raise that hand. Here's where you quench it. Here's where it's of the utmost importance for you, as I heard it, Brother Gary say in Sunday school, for you to be obedient. God tells you to say something for him, you be obedient to him. Amen. If God tells you to raise your hand, amen, you be obedient. If God tells you to run through the front door, you run, amen. Don't do it for your glory, for the flesh's glory, but do it for God's glory. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm afraid of. The Spirit of God, if we get too prideful, if we get all to get the pride out of our hearts, and quit worrying about what everybody thinks to the left and to the right of us, and we just worship God, amen. Hey, I'll tell you what, we'd see a lot of things happen. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, friend. So we see that the oil's there. Not only that, look with me in verse number 6. I'm about done. It says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Thank God for God. I've heard of, I read a little bit about this and it was okay, but thank God for God's goodness and God's mercy. I thank God He's good to us. Though we don't deserve it. And He's merciful. Amen. When we mess up, or sinner, when, if you don't get saved, amen, He's still merciful to you every day. By giving you another breath. Child of God, He's merciful to you. You sin against Him, friend, He could kill you. Amen. If He don't, that's mercy. You say, that's our preacher, but it is what it is for the Bible. Amen. Goodness, mercy. That's God's footman for the child of God. That's God. That's a footman for anybody. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. Amen. Thank God for His goodness. Thank God for His mercy. Amen. Lastly, we see here, number three, we see David. We've seen his personal relationship with the Lord as his shepherd. We've seen his personal journey. But not only this, we see his personal praise of his eternity. You know what will get you to shout and what will get you to rejoice in the Lord and have joy? If you'll just praise God that he saved you. And you praise God that you have an everlasting life. Amen. The moment you get saved, you. Friend, you can't get no more saved than what you got saved when you got saved. Amen. Does that make any sense? You can get closer to God. Amen. But my friend, you ought to thank you when you got saved, you got eternal life. Amen. Eternal life presently. Right here, right now, I've got presently eternal life. Thank God I'll never die. David said, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's eternal. That's eternal life, friend. And then closing, if I can have the piano player to come. I want to ask you this question today. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, nobody looking around. Serious business here. Is the Lord your shepherd? Lost person? The night I got saved, I didn't have to go ask my preacher who was dealing with me. I didn't have to ask anybody who was dealing with me. I knew that it was God Almighty that was speaking to my heart. Is He your shepherd this morning? Can you truly say that you have been born again? Have you been to Calvary, friend? Have you had that spiritual birth that Jesus told Nicodemus about? Nicodemus didn't understand. He said, can I enter again a second time? My mother's going to 
Jesus told him, he said, hey, you must be born again. Talking about that spiritual birth. It's often been quoted that a man that has been born twice only dies once. But a man that's been born once will die twice. What are you getting at, preacher? Lost person, if you're here today, the Lord Almighty's not your shepherd. He ain't your personal Savior. And Lord, amen, and you die in your sins, and you die, and you will die, die and go to hell on your behalf, not on His. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. It is a whosoever gospel this morning. It's free and available to anybody. Would you come? Is He your shepherd? Has He called your name? Has He spoke to your heart? He said, come to me. I don't care if young old like. It doesn't matter. I don't care how many professions of faith you've made. Friend, if you're not a new creature in Christ, it says, amen, you live there in Christ are new creatures. Would you come, lost person? Would you come? If you'll take that one step of faith, God will meet you there. I believe that. Child of God, I'm going to talk to you. Carried around a weight of discouragement? You carried around depression? Are you carried around the weight of anxiety? All these weights are you carrying that around? Would you come to your shepherd and lay it at his feet? And just lay it down to him? Whatever. Child, you might be going through. Every battle you might be facing. Every giant you're facing. Can you say like that? The Lord's my shepherd. They can do it. And he knew who he was trying to. His shepherd. Just run to your shepherd this morning. Whatever it ain't, no problem too small or too big. Now, backslider, I'm going to talk to you. Out of the will of God. You know you are. You're miserable. You know what it's like to be in the center of God's will. You know what it's like if David may mention the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not belong. You know all about that. But you backslid on God. You've got a cold and indifferent on you. Would you come back to Him? Get your fellowship restored with Him. Some of the most miserable people is a backslider. Why is that, preacher? Because they know that they have been born again. They know that they're saved. And they're out of the will of God. Would you come back to Him? He's standing here without stretch. He never left you. You may have walked away from Him. Or something, I don't know. Would you get it right between you and him this morning? I don't know nobody's heart in here. I dare not play God, but I think God sent this message for a reason. And he sent it right your way, whoever it is. As they sing, one more verse. Would you come?
certainly has been good to be here. I appreciate the Sweet Young Baptist Church. And I love you all from the depths of my heart. I appreciate you this morning. I want you to know that. I love y'all. Love y'all's pastor. Y'all pray for him. Hey Amen. I'll tell you, he's a friend of ours. Uh, he's actually preaching the night I got saved. I'm just going to give flowers. He was one of them two preachers that preached the young Bible straight that I needed to hear. And I thank God for him. I'm not giving Patrick no more, but I'm giving him flowers while he's still here. Amen. And I'll tell you what, church. Don't get discouraged and disheartened on God. Jesus loves you. Your Lord loves you. Don't ever forget that, amen. He died for you. 